demands of supply chain data monitoring and business intelligence in the pandemic. Topic of my conversation today with Evan Rhodes. He is Director of Client Services with P3. Hello, Evan. How are you? Doing excellent. How are you, Robert? Very well, thank you. Let's start out just by asking a basic question. How has the need for real-time data changed? Sure. Uh, Real-time data demand is driven now more than ever as consumers, retailers, manufacturers, really everyone serving the supply chain is demanding real-time information. Uh, When data is transformed into information and ultimately into insights, it creates value for the end consumer to drive change within the supply chain. Specifically, e-commerce has driven the need for real-time information even further as transparency has increased those demands for speed and reliability. Can you draw a direct line between real-time data and supply chain resilience? Absolutely. And I think it's important to distinguish the difference between data and information or real-time information. Mm -hmm. Data is what we had years ago. We had mounds of it. And trying to decipher it to make quick decisions has always been the challenge. Today, with business intelligence tools, data instantly becomes useful information and insights to aid in the decision-making process. Let's mm-hmm. us predict actions to prevent those failures in the supply chain. So really, instead of looking in the rearview mirror, we're looking forward to anticipate events. What types of data are we talking about? Where is it coming from? And what is it about? Well, the data is probably coming from everywhere, Robert. <laughs> But most importantly, we should really be focused on eliminating any of the noise and focused on data that really is aligned with key strategic and tactical decisions that the business needs to make in order to operate effectively. These are probably their core KPIs that align with things like customer expectations, employee satisfaction and improving their satisfaction, increasing shareholder value, Um, all of that information to support those KPIs and ultimately really should, again, be aligned with their decision-making process. Talk about eliminating the noise. Well, in the age of the Internet of Things and more data sources than ever, there's an awful lot of noise out there. Mm -hmm. And I I mean, just to say that makes it sound simple, but it can't be that simple. It's figuring out what is signal, what is noise, what is crucial, where your KPIs are. How do companies even go about getting their arms around that in the first place? Well, they probably can simplify that a lot by thinking about what are the key business decisions that we need to make. Mm -hmm. In some cases for managers, these are probably some of the things that keep them up at night. Um, Questions they don't know the answer to, but they they recognize it's important. They're also probably the answers to questions to leverage opportunities, strengths within their organization, and also probably to respond to external factors such as threats that might be coming from either the market, other industries, or competitors. Where do you think companies are falling short in accessing data today? Where are the most difficult places to to get it in a real-time sense? Sure. So, One of the places that organizations are falling short is on a larger level, they're using older technologies and old tools to answer modern questions and modern problems. Sometimes this means relying on very large uh, static Excel spreadsheets when instead they could be focused on more modern tools, tools that make accessing, analyzing, and understanding the data easier. Well, okay, but uh, getting data from supply chain partners or having access to it depends on the willingness and the capability of that partner to provide you with that data on a timely basis. I mean, you can internally, you can be perfect, but you've got to go outside and get the data from your partners. How do you go about setting up situations and convincing them to go along with you on this real-time data ride, so to speak? Sure. Well, leveraging modern business intelligence tools and solutions is the first step. Uh, That democratizes the data, uh, makes getting to the data easier, and even more specifically, getting to the data that the business wants and that the business needs, Mm -hmm. right? Eliminating, again, a lot of that noise can certainly help them do that. The other is finding the partner um, that can help you to access that data and shares the same vision and understanding of where you're trying to take your real-time data solutions, 
and the business questions you're trying to answer. And finally, looking for and implementing a solution that the business itself and analysts and business folks can own and explore their data and utilize without um, a whole lot of unnecessary support so that they can really make sense of the data and deliver insights across the whole organization. Discussions about data these days often divided into two camps, structured and unstructured. The unstructured stuff, a lot of times coming from social media, more difficult to access, more difficult to parse and figure out. And boy, getting the noise out of that can be a big deal. What is the challenge in terms of bringing unstructured data into your organization? The challenge really starts with having a plan of how you're going to use it. Uh, understanding, as you said, bringing in all that noise, bringing in social media information, there's a lot of it. And there's a lot of different places to look. And there's certainly value in not exactly knowing and letting the data drive you to some answers. But at the same point, having a strategy with how you're going to use it and what you're trying to answer will help you eliminate some of the mess and help you structure it a little bit once you bring it into your tool. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk more about this whole idea of making sense of this massive data, whether structured or unstructured, and the fact that there's more of it than ever before. Mm -hmm. So much uh, analytics is a big deal these days, is it not? Uh, what, mm -hmm. How sophisticated is it? I understand that art artificial intelligence is being brought to bear on it. Talk a little bit about the role of analytics and how it can help us to parse through this tremendous amount of data that we have to deal with these days. Sure, and analytics is a, certainly a, a buzzword nowadays and seeping into everything across business and, and into sports. But analytics at the core is really about making sense of that data. In many cases, it's bringing some of those core metrics that may a business may be looking at across five, six, seven metrics, maybe trying to distill that down into some core single metrics that may cut across different parts of the business. Mm -hmm. Specifically for supply chain, it may be understanding not just inventory, but also understanding impacts of inventory as it relates to sales and it relates to purchasing and creating single metrics across different parts of the functional operational parts of the business will really let them and let an organization make a decision and see how that decision impacts multiple parts of the business. I want to get back to this talk about supply chain resilience, because you talked about how we can no longer be looking at data in the rearview mirror, looking at real time, which suggests we're using data right now. Mm -hmm. How can data be employed in a forward looking manner and a predictive capability to help you understand future situations and thereby make your supply chains more resilient? Absolutely. The ability to predict, the ability to understand by using the data that an organization has, and really across, again, the functional areas of an organization to understand, do they have enough material? What actions can they take ahead of time so that they're not late, so that they can continue to deliver to their uh, customers? Maybe bring down costs of overhead or extra inventory, move inventory that's not moving faster. They can contact their different suppliers globally to ramp up production or slow down production if it's not needed. So the ability to predict based on evidence and based on uh, different data points across the organization can really help take action beforehand. It feels like the speed, the volume, and the complexity of data is such today that it's too much for actual human beings to handle. We just talked about analytics and AI as a, as a partner in that. To what extent do you think that in now and in the future, humans will be taken out of the equation altogether and we will be depending on our systems to tell us what the data means and how we can use it going forward? I think that as we continue to improve and perfect machine learning and artificial intelligence, there will always be the capabilities to leverage the computers to think for us. However, there's always going to be a human element. There's always a human factor to truly understand the gray area, to truly understand elements of logic and elements of, of different uh, things that are happening within an organization, within the supply chain. So there's always going to be humans. I don't think we'll ever completely remove humans from the decision-making process. In, in a perfect situation, analytics and machine learning um, and all real-time data, they're tools. 
They're tools to help human beings make decisions. And there's always going to be some hesitance from individuals to not allow machines to make decisions for them. Mm -hmm. But if we can use these tools to help us as a tool, then we'll be able to make better data-driven decisions, but it's still decision-making, still a human thing. So you think that even though analytics would get to the point, the sophistication of it can take us from predictive, which we've already talked about, to prescriptive, in fact, telling us what to do with the data, you think a human being has to be pushing that final button when it comes to executing on the, on the decision. Absolutely. And some of that means closing that action loop. Really, all of this information, even per- prescriptive, predictive analytics, machine learning, again, it's there to help tell a person what they should do. Mm-hmm. By closing that action loop within reports, that really is going to allow individuals to then immediately take action because ultimately that's what the information is there for, to help drive action. So using that, using these reports and using that intelligence will allow people to in fact take that action um, and then go ahead and improve their business and organizations. At the risk of using a very controversial term, we've been talking about business intelligence for years and years, but it sounds like what you are describing to me now makes these systems truly intelligent. Would you go so far as to say that? I would, they are intelligent. And as again, as we continue to expand our knowledge and use of machine learning and prescriptive analytics, there is elements of the models are learning. They're actually learning for us. They're learning based on what has happened and based on inputs that we as humans are giving them. So there's definitely intelligence going on. Mm -hmm. So underlying the whole concept of supply chain resilience, the very uh, crucial importance of data and business intelligence, Evan Rhodes of P3, thank you so much for guiding us through this thicket, this very difficult and complex subject and helping shine a light on the whole thing. Thanks very much for being with me today. I really appreciate it. Great. Thank you very much, Robert. I appreciate it.